In order to find the complement of an angle whose measure is 26, we just take 90 minus 26 and we end up with 64. So complementary angles add up to 90, so uh, 64 and 26 equals 90, so the complement to 26 is 64. Uh, the second question, same sort of setup, except now it's 33 degrees, 29 minutes. So what I do is I think of the 90 degrees as the same as 89 degrees um, and 60 minutes. 60 minutes being the same as a degree. Um, that's actually then the same as 90 degrees. So then I can take and subtract the 33 degrees, 29 minutes from that. Uh, so 60 minutes minus 29 minutes would be 31 minutes, and 89 minus the 33 would be 56 degrees. And you should be able to check that, that uh, 56 plus 33 is 89, and then the 31 and 29 makes 60 minutes, which is a whole other degree. So it does add up to 90 degrees, that's the idea. For questions 3 and 4, we're finding supplements of angles. Supplementary angles are, one; uh, their sum is 180 degrees. So really for this first one, number 3, we just do 180 degrees minus 61 degrees, and we come up with 119 degrees. So the supplement to an angle whose measure is 61 degrees is 119 degrees. For number four, we're also talking supplementary angles, but we have degrees, minutes, and seconds. So again, what I think of is my 180 degrees is 179 degrees, 59 minutes, and 60 seconds. So there, the 60 seconds makes a whole minute. Then we have 60 minutes, which 60 minutes makes another degree. So it's the same as 180 degrees. But now I have degrees, minutes, and seconds that I can subtract my degrees, minutes, and seconds from. And so we end up with a total of 53 seconds. The 59 minus the 32 gives me 27 minutes. And then 179 minus the 37 gives me 100 and. 42 degrees. For number 5, they just tell us the angles are supplementary. They give us the angle measures. The angle measures being 2x plus 1 and 3x plus 4. So since they are supplementary, then the 2x plus 1 plus the 3x plus 4 would equal 180 degrees. We have a total of 5x plus 5 that equals 180 degrees. So we subtract the 5, we get 5x equals 175. Divide by 5, we get x equals 35. And uh, however, that is not the answer. We have to use the x equals 35 to plug that in to find the um, measure of those supplementary angles. When we plug that into the 2x plus 1, 2 times 35 is 70, and uh, add the 1, we get 71 degrees for one of our answers. Uh, we do the same thing for the 3x plus 4, and when we do that, we get uh, 3 times 35 being 105, add the 4, we get 109 degrees. Uh, it does make sense there that those uh, would be the answers because 71 and 109 are supplementary. Number 6 is the same idea, only complementary angles. So the 3x plus the 6x minus 27 would equal 90. So 9x minus 27 would equal 90. Add the 27 to the 90 and we get 9x equals 117. Divide that by 9, we get x equals 13. However, make sure you don't stop there. That is not the answer. We plug the 13 in for x. Uh, 3 times 13 would be 39. And the 6 times 13 uh, minus the uh, 
the 27 ends up being 51. Um, so 39 and 51, that makes sense because that does add up to 90. For 7 and 8, we are trying to find the angle of smallest possible positive measure that's coterminal with the given angle. So coterminal angles are always going to be 360 degrees apart or multiples of 360. Um, so really all we do is we add or subtract multiples of 360 in order to come up with those coterminal angles. And so the negative 19 plus the 360 ends up giving us 341 degrees. So that would be the angle that would be coterminal uh, to negative 19. Now 592 is over 360 but less than 720 so we would just subtract 360 from that 592 that'll give us an angle 232 degrees that's between 0 and 360 so again 232 is coterminal to 592 and 341 is coterminal to negative 19 for number 9 we're converting 55 degrees 7 minutes 11 seconds to uh, decimal degrees rounded to the nearest hundredth so the way we start this is we divide the 11 by 60. That will convert those seconds to minutes. From there, we add the 7 minutes in. So now we have minutes. And what we do is we divide this by 60 as well, and that will convert that to degrees. Um, so that ends up being approximately 0 0.119. Uh, degrees and so then we add the 55 back in and so we get the 55.12 degrees once we round that um, because we're talking um, 0.119 is what we get when we divide this whole uh, or do this whole piece um, so again, it's the 11 seconds divided by 60, converts it to minutes. Add the 7 to that, it's about 7.18, and then a 3 repeating. Divide that amount by 60, 0.1197 with a 2 repeating, and then add that to the 55. So when you round it to two decimal places, the nearest hundredth of a degree, we get 55.12 degrees for our amount there. And again, uh, typically just do that in the calculator to come up with the answer. Number 10, converting to degrees, minutes, and seconds from the 172.76 degrees. Really what we look at there is we multiply the 0 0.76 by 60. That gives us 45.6. So I know that it will be 172 point, or 172 degrees, 45 minutes. And then we multiply that 0 0.6 by 60 which gives us a uh, 36, so that's 36 seconds. Um, so again, we just uh, take the 45, that becomes the minutes, the 0.6, then we multiply that by 60, that gives us 36, that becomes the seconds. Uh, you can do that on the calculator as well, um, but again, good to be able to do that by hand. For number 11, these angles are vertical angles, so we set the 3x plus 9 equal to the 4x minus 0, so really 3x plus 9 equals the 4x. Subtract the 3x from both sides, we get 9 equals x. Uh, however, we're not done there, they want us to find the measure of the marked angles, so we know x is 9, uh, so the 4 times 9 for b, that'll be 36 degrees. And then so the other side, 27 plus 9, would also have to be 36 degrees because they have to be the same. For number 12, notice there are three marked angles, the 2x, the a, and the b. So all of those added together, since they are the angles of a triangle, would equal 180 degrees. We have a total of four x's. And then the 24 and the 76... Uh, those added together ends up being 100. 
So 4x plus 100 equals 180. We subtract the 100 from both sides, we get 4x equals 80. Divide by the 4, we get x equals 20. Again, x equals 20, not the answer. The answer would be the measure of the marked angles. So if x is 20, then 2 times x would be 40 degrees. A would be 20 plus 24, so 44 degrees. And B being the uh, 20 plus 76 would be 96 degrees. For problem 13, we do know that those uh, angles A and B will be supplementary. Again, M and N are parallel because they're both horizontal lines. Uh, a looks like the acute angle in the diagram and B being the, the obtuse angle, so they have to be supplementary. So what we can do with that is we can add A and B together, and they would total 180. Now if I add A and B, I'd get a total of 5x plus 120 equals the 180. So subtract the 120, I get 5x equals 60. And so I divide by 5, I get x equals 12. Again, don't stop at x equals 12. I need to use the 12 to find the angle measures. So if I plug the 12 into A, I get 2 times 12, which would be 24, plus the 5, so 29 degrees there. And again, resist the temptation just to figure out the supplementary angle there. Uh, actually go ahead and plug that in for the B. Uh, so 3 times 24 being... Sorry, I meant the 3 times 12 would be 36 plus the 115 would be 151. So the two angles end up being the 151 and the 29. Uh, 29, of course, being here, 151 being there. For 14 and 15, it's really the same directions. The triangles are similar. Find the missing side angle or value of the variable. So here, we want to find x. And on here, we want to find r. Um, so get back to uh, 14. Now, they give us all these values. I would recommend probably writing these in. So the 25, the 24, the 7. Uh, they give me D is 50 and E is 48. Now, this one is a pretty simple relationship. You might notice right away that the uh, 50 is twice as much as 25 and 48 is twice as much as 24. However, I would like you to be able to set these up um, when they're not that nice. So uh, I would recommend setting this up Again, I have my way that I like to do that. I like to put what I'm trying to find on the top left. I like to put it over one of its own values. Now, in this case, since I have the 50 and the 25, I could go 50 and 25. Since I have the 48 and the 24, I could use the 48, 24. So either way there, um, I think I'll go with the 50. Nice number ending in a zero. Now, so x over 50 would correspond to 7 over 25. So 7 over 25 there. Um, you could do the whole cross multiply and divide bit. I would, though, just multiply both sides by 50. However you do that, you should come up with x equals 14. Now, since the missing side we're looking for is actually x, then we can stop just with the x equals 14 for that one. Now for 15, we want to find the measure of angle r. Again, they tell us that those uh, triangles are similar. Um, they do mention that the A is 19 centimeters and B is 117 degrees. Really, the 19 centimeters is information we don't need. Uh, if the triangles are similar, then the corresponding angles are similar. And since Z is obtuse and R is clearly obtuse, they have to be the same measure. So R would be 117 degrees. number 16, they describe the triangle on the map has sides of length 9, 7, or sorry, 9, 12, and 15. Um, I would recommend drawing that out um, so you can see that. Now, it doesn't say it's a right triangle, but to me that's the easiest way to sketch it out so you can tell the shortest, middle, and longest sides for those. 
I would also then draw out the other triangle for the real life distances. It tells the shortest real life distance is 102. So in my diagram, I would match it up to the 9. They want me to find the longest of the real life distances, so I would mark that along my you know, hypotenuse for my right triangle -ish type of figure here. And again, I just do them this way so it's easy to tell short, middle, long side. Now the 12 is extra information. I'm not going to be able to use it since I don't have the middle uh, real-life distance and I'm not looking for it. Setting up my problem, I still prefer putting my uh, variable I'm trying to find on the top left. I like to keep it over the value from its own triangle. Now that x, the, the longest real-life distance, would correspond to the longest map distance, which is the 15 centimeters. And then the 102 is the shortest, so that would correspond to the 9. So again, earlier I mentioned you know, wanting you to be able to set these up because they're not always nice numbers. So here's why. Um, again, you could do the whole cross, multiply, and divide. I would just multiply both sides by 102. This actually works out to be a nice number. We get 170 when we do 15 divided by 9 times 102. So the longest real-life distance would be 170 kilometers.